Out of Zion comes our salvation. You're listening to the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. The show is dedicated to reaching the lost and educating the found. I want to encourage you to go to our website, RabbiScott.com. We do a very special thing. We want to bless Israel, and we do that by planting trees in Israel. And you can go to our website and click on the plant a tree, and we will plant a tree in Israel to a donation of $25. Remember, we are a listener-supported show, and it's a great way to support the ministry. And we'll also send you a certificate that you could fill out. You can do it in memory of someone or in honor of a special event. Um, and uh, we give you a beautiful uh, 8 by 10 color print for you to put on your wall or to give to the person to remember that. So go check that out at RabbiScott.com. But Judy, while we are talking about that, we're in a very special time right now, the counting of the omen. Matt Vax says in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 10 and 11, it says, When you enter the land I am going to give you, and you reap the harvest, bring the to the priest an omer of the first grain you harvest. Uh, he is to wave the, the sheaf before Adonai, so it will be accepted on your behalf, and the priest is to wave it on the day after the Shabbat. Boy, there's a big question mark about that. Can I deal with that real quick before you go into uh, your part? Okay. And hopefully they can't, time. They can't see the look, and they can't see the <laughs> smile. <laughs> well, they can because well, they're, they're watching they're on YouTube. YouTube. But, so I'm going to say it, but I wanted to caveat it so people don't think I'm just being mean or catty, but do I really have a choice? Yes, you do. No, I don't. <laughs> See, I told you. So, here's a big question. I've been around you long yes, enough. Yes, you did. And I'm your husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know that, honey. <laughs> so, <laughs> you got to watch this on YouTube. Uh. Um, so, <laughs> the day after Shabbat, and here's the question. It's talking about when we start counting the Omer, and we count after Passover up to the Feast of Latter Fruits. But why would we count after Passover? Well, because that's the question. It said, well, he, t- he t- tells us to count the Omer leading up to it. And the question is, is it the weekly Shabbat, which would be, you know, Friday night to Saturday night, or is it the day of, of after the feast of Passover. Because Passover is considered... Passover's a, a Sabbath gadol, a high you. Sabbath, and it can be any day of the week. Now, what's interesting, by the way in which it happened, each one falls on the same day, so it doesn't help us. But what's interesting about this, when you start counting the Omer, is that we see this take place of what was being done at the time of Yeshua. Because some will say you start counting the 50 days after Passover. and Which means the, um, the Shavuot would fall on any, day of, any day of the week. Or you count it starting the f- after the weekly Sabbath, which means it would always end on a Sunday. Well, we know that Messiah rose on uh, before the end of Shabbat, but he rose on the Feast of First fruits, which that year happened to be the first day of the week, or what we now call Sunday. So we don't get an answer from it, but what we do know is Yeshua had no problem correcting people. And he would say, you have been taught this, but I tell you that. Well, the the teaching at the time was the count starting the day after Passover, and since Yeshua did not correct it, we can say that is when it was. And that's because the Pharisees kind of were more the dominant party at the time. The Sadducees right. were in control of the temple, but they control, the Pharisees really controlled the teaching. Yeshua right. fell in line much more with the Pharisees, or I should say the Pharisees fall in line much more with Yeshua. But we definitely see here that Yeshua does not correct it, and he would have uh, if there was a problem. And here's the thing that, again, falls into why it was probably more, because you have some people who, and you've had this debate with individuals before about the Sadducees versus right. the, the Pharisee, Pharisee. Method, m- method. But there's two important things that um, kind of fall, that support the Pharisee version of this. The first one is Josephus, who himself was a member of the temple priesthood, reports in, an- in Antiquities 3, 10, 5 through 6. On the second day of unleavened bread, which is the 16th day of the month, they shall they first partake of the fruits of the earth, for before that day they do not touch them. They also at this participation of the first fruits of the earth sacrifice a lamb as a burnt offering to God. So here you've got an independent person right. saying that it starts at that Passover, after the Shabbat of Passover. And then there's another 
Philo, another first century um, Jewish person, said there is also a festival on the day of the Passover feast, which which succeeds the first day. And this is named the sheaf or the Omer from what takes place on it. So you've got two people who both agree that this was being practiced in accordance with the Pharisaic customs. Right. And so that's really important because I've had discussions with people and they're, oh no, it's always this. If you look at the time of Yeshua, it definitely was not that. And the fact that Yeshua doesn't change it. And he had no problem saying, you've been told this, but I tell you this that we have to go on the counting of that time. So the commandment, and barley is the first crop that's going to ripen. So that's so, the feast of first fruits. So that's why it ends up being a barley sheep. And it says, and this commandment is really serves to remind Israel that the land and its produce doesn't belong to them, right. but it belongs to God. And that the people of Israel could not enjoy the the fruit of the land until they had acknowledged that and given God his portion, right. basically a tithe. Exactly. And, and that's where the tithe of first fruits comes, comes from. from. But we'll deal with that maybe next week. Yes, I, I, I see that look multi-parter. In, I, I see that look in your eye. We're not going to go there yet. So the important thing is it's, and I think we're just going to kind of stand more with the, the, the um, Basics of it. Basics of it. Thank you. I've lost my train of thought. But it's 49 days. So you're right. counting the 49 days leading up from when the Israelites left Egypt. Right. That journey up until they get the revelation of God from Shavuot. Right. So we're counting during that time. We're counting in preparation of receiving God's word. So this is really a time where you kind of take your spiritual inventory, you're you're preparing yourself, preparing your heart, preparing your mind for a revelation that God's going to give you. We also should note, Judy, and we'll probably talk about this more next week as well, is this time of the Feast of Latter Fruits, which we're going to be leading up to, is also when the rabbis tell us that they gave, that God gave the Torah to the children of Israel, and we have a unique thing. Do I have time to go into no. it? Or, okay, but we're gonna have, next week. We're gonna look at that and how this can relate to what happens at Shavuot at the time of the disciples with the infant of the spirit. It's it's wild and it will blow you away. And during these forty nine days, the wheat crop is actually ripening in Israel. So by the end of the count, the crops ready for harvest and the first fruits of the wheat crop can be brought to the temple for Shavuot. And during this, we count. And what's interesting is, you know, what do you do when you're going on vacation? You're going to count count down. down. You count down the days. You count down the minutes, the hours, whatever. But in this, we're actually counting counting up. up. We count up in anticipation versus counting down. Why don't you give the prayer that we say every day because people are going to start doing this um, before we end the show here, so they, they, that way they know what to pray. Well, and actually, though, if they go on Facebook and become friends of the Messianic Hour on Facebook, I'm posting that each day. Are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has commanded us by his commandments to count the Omer? Right. And we do that every day, and you'll count day one, day two, going up. Do we do it in the morning or the evening? Well, of course, you do it in the evening. So at the sunset, you count it. And so they, again, go to our Facebook page, like us on Facebook at the Messianic Hour, and you can get that information as well. And that way they'll have that there to see. And what we're going to talk about next week also is we're going to bring Messiah into the Omer, but also how many times Messiah appeared during this count. See, so this is some very interesting things going Mm -hmm. on. And this feast, in between the two feasts, very important for us as believers as we're going to see with the resurrection of our Messiah. Remember, he dies on Passover. He is resurrected on the Feast of First Fruits. Major events take place during the time of our Messiah. We're going to see how they fall in line with the Feast of the Lord. You're not going to miss it. I want to encourage you to go to our website, RabbiScott.com. You can also see teachings that I have done at our service on the Feast of Latter Fruits. So go check that out again, RabbiScott.com and the Messianic Hour. Until next week, this is Rabbi Scott and Judy saying shalom and pray for the peace of Jerusalem.